enigma that is Michael Jackson. Childhood vomit. What is he black or is he white? Is he white or is he black? And and to sum up this creature is truly bizarre. Too crazy. Monster. Monster. You know, violent. child voice. We are looking at a difference of 30 years and the changes are clearly bizarre. Uh, we are looking at uh, someone who's had extensive surgery to his nose, obviously surgery to his lower eyelids. His skin is considerably paler, his facial proportions are completely abnormal and the overall effect is unnatural. Welcome to the phenomenon that is Michael Jackson's ever-changing face. Tonight, we scrutinise Jacko's life and musical career to uncover the reasons behind the genius's physical transformation from this to this. Face experts the world over agree that this computer-generated mock-up represents what a de surgery Jacko would look like. So why in the name of Wacko has it all gone so terribly wrong for our plastic-featured friend? He did say that the day he knew he could control his appearance was the happiest day of his life. And perhaps it was. He's changed his, his nose and this and that, and, and we all do it. I mean, we've all done it. I mean, if I don't like the way I look, I'm going to change something. The whole surgery thing, I don't get it. I don't get the family. These are all really attractive people, so why are they carving themselves up? I don't know. If we look at the childhood he had, his father called him names such as Big Nose, and I think his brothers called him Liver Lips. We can see the effect of that in Michael with his impulsive need to change his appearance. He's got caught up in this whole plastique of recreating himself facially, and it's descended into madness and obsession. All his behavior is that of somebody addicted to surgery. He keeps going and he keeps going. He's creating himself for this huge worldwide audience. The paradox is that the whole world is sitting there saying, oh, what's he doing to his face? And as foreseen in the thriller video, it wasn't long before life imitated art as people became more and more appalled by Michael's real life obsession with physical metamorphosis. He no longer has a normal appearance. His appearance is now abnormal. Suitable only for Halloween is his face. The nose is like a melting ice cream together again. In a way, he provides an example to many people of what not to do with cosmetic surgery. And many patients will say when they come, I don't want to look like Michael Jackson. His face does look quite disfigured now, whereas there was a time when it just looked normal. We are looking at a 14-year-old boy who has typical features of a person of African origin. His nose is very wide and very flat. He doesn't have much definition to his tip of the nose. Apart from that, he has perfectly normal features uh, of an attractive 14-year-old boy. <laughs> Michael and his brothers grew up in Hicksville, Indiana, and before they had successfully completed potty training, they were mercilessly molded into the world's youngest ever boy band by uncompromising dad, Joseph. Joe Jackson did all of the wrong things, but for the right reasons. There was a lot of discipline occurring in the family when the boys were young and when they were teenagers, uh, from which they really never recovered. He was the, the driving force behind getting us together and making sure that we I guess rehearsed. He very much loved his family and his boys and, uh, uh, and wanted to do whatever he could to, to bring them out of Gary, Indiana and 
make them stars. Rehearsing, 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 rehearsing. Practicing and rehearsing and practicing dance steps. Music, music, music. Rehearsing and smacking them around and rehearsing and... Rehearsals, rehearsals, rehearsals. Hitting them again and rehearsing until finally they actually began to gel as a, as a unit and as a group. After unmodern parent Joe had beaten them into shape, it wasn't long before the battered brothers came to the attention of 60s singing sensation Bobby Taylor. As I saw them each day, I said, these kids are going to be something. So I talked to the father and asked him, I said, hey, man, I can get you guys with uh, Motown. I said, I'm, I'm in pretty tight with Barry Gordy. And Barry says, uh, tell him to take video of it and fly it out to me. Jacko's cherubic charm and the genesis of his early genius was clear for all to see at the Motown audition. In that performance, in the Motown video, Michael could sing better or scream better than James Brown could. Michael was better than James ever thought about being. Michael wasn't taught. Everything he did was natural, and that was the key. They all thought he was just cute. He was out front, he was doing the uh, singing, and that was the moment. And right then and there was the beginning of the direction of where the Jackson 5 was gonna go. The Jackson 5 were duly given the Motown makeover treatment, and within the year unleashed their new look on the Ed Sullivan Show. It was their first performance as a Motown act. All the attention really was on Michael with that amazing voice and that amazing talent as a dancer and the boys sang in the background, and it turned out to be this amazing song, I Want You Back. The Ed Sullivan Show is the archetypal Jazz Five performance because you've got these amazing dance steps, you've got the colorful outfits and the little super fly hats, and here is a miniature superstar, just right there, bang. Unbelievable self-assurance. Took a little while for it to reach number one, but when it did, it stayed there. And it's known as, as sort of the epitome of all that was the Jackson 5. We were standing around the radio with our heads, all these afros bunched up, and they said, now we're going to have this new song from a new group, the Jackson 5, and then, dun, 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 dun. we were just, we're on the radio, we're on the radio, we were cheering and laughing, it was so exciting. I cannot even imagine what it must be like to have become famous at 10 and to have lost probably any anonymity or privacy by the time of 12. They really enjoyed the adulation and the girls chasing them, and they kind of made a game out of it. It wasn't until he became older, when he became a teenager, and his face started breaking out, and he was going through puberty, and his voice was changing. That's when he was having some serious problems, being the Michael Jackson that he thought that his fans wanted him to be. I had a bad acne problem as well. We used to have it so bad, we used to did like to look at someone when we talked to him, because you, you would think they're looking at the bumps on your face. Michael was very self-conscious about how he looked. He used to ask me, dang, Bobby, man, look at my nose, man. It's, it's too wide. It was a, a sore spot with the boys who used to call him Big Nose. Big head, big nose, big lips. Michael didn't have no giant lips. Don't play with the sunshine. Don't play with the moonlight. The Jacksons continued their chart-topping success into the disco era, and with Michael successfully zapping his last zit, there were few clues of the problems that lay ahead for our future funny face chum. In Seoul, when we saw what was happening with the Jackson 5, we did an issue focusing on Michael Jackson. With all that he has going for him at this young age, Michael is terribly like most other youngsters in our country. He's concerned about his appearance, his acceptance by kids his own age, Michael is so normal, as a matter of fact, that you can't help wonder what problems he does have. Problems, he asks, I don't have any problems, not a one. But maybe when I get older. Gardening, the new rock and roll.
Here we see the same person approximately eight years later and there are clearly changes to his face. He has had surgery to his nose. It is the overall width of the nose that has changed, including his tip. But his face remains attractive and he has suffered no ill effects from his surgery. All of a sudden, he went from having a wide negroid nose to a nose you would see like on a 21-year-old Jewish girl. <laughs> you know, pretty pert, you know. I remember the first time I photographed him like that. I wasn't even thinking. I took the loop and I picked up the slide and I took the loop and I, look at his nose, look at his nose. The actual first nose job that Michael had occurred because he tripped and fell on stage. So he didn't actually go in and have the first nose job for cosmetic reasons as much as he did it for medical reasons. And then after that first nose job, he rather liked what he saw, and it began the process that, you know, we all know about. However, a new Hooter wasn't the only major change in Jacko's life. To coincide with the release of his first solo album, newly independent Jacko had dispensed with his over-controlling manager and father, Joe. It's difficult to fire your father, but it's more difficult, I think, to know that you're coming home to not only your boss, but the man who is trying to raise you. In stepped record producer Quincy Jones to fill the breach. Quincy's a perfectionist, so to work with someone who could stand right there with Michael and probably challenge him and push him to another level, I think that was part of what the benefits were from the relationship. That's a winning hand. Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones, it's a winning hand. <laughs> If you look at the video for Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, what you see is Michael Jackson uh, fully independent from his father. He looks like he's really happy and that he can't stop himself from expressing this sense of freedom on film. It's kind of a silly video, but it's a good video because it really does express Michael's sense of freedom and independence. Fans of black music hold Off the Wall up as his best album because that was the last album he made that could be defined as black music, could be defined as R&B. Great hooks, great storyline and melodic melodies and it just had everything going for itself. Superstar and musical genius Jacko may have sacked Dado, but sadly he hadn't exorcised all his demons. Even though Off the Wall shot Michael into sort of a stratosphere of superstardom, it was around that time when he started to become a lot more unhappy in his personal life. He was still trying to get over the child abuse that he felt that he suffered at the hands of his father. He was trying to control his celebrity and he was also trying to control his image. And part of image control for Michael uh, at that time manifested itself with an increased amount of plastic surgery. It's interesting that his father once said that his nose was just like Michael Jackson's nose and it could very well be that the reason he kept having his nose changed was to get rid of the father's appearance in his nose. He did not want to look in the mirror and see his father reflected back at him and I think that uh, he very slowly began to transform his image so that he no longer looked like Joseph. We are looking at the same man a few years later who has had more surgery to his nose whereby the nose is slightly narrower. There's some suggestion that he may have had surgery to his cheeks which appear to be fuller. He still looks very attractive and the surgery has clearly done no harm to his appearance. Michael was to transform his career as well as his face with monster hit Thriller. Michael fully intended for Thriller to be the biggest record of all time even long before it was completed. He would actually write it on his mirror and look at it every day that he wanted the largest selling album. Even Quincy didn't believe that it was going to be as successful as Michael thought it was going to be. He wanted to be 
the biggest entertainer of all times, and he wanted to have the most selling album of all time. <laughs> <laughs>